Hello and uh, welcome back to The Stronghold. I'm the Magi and it's midweek. And yes, this is a midweek magic video, but it ain't no ordinary midweek magic video because this is also going to be the jump in tier list video for this season. So if you're catching this later on in the season and you missed out on the midweek magic, don't miss out on the jump in tier list information. It's that important. And hey, just in case you haven't seen my Midweek Magic content before, as far as I know, we are still the only channel on YouTube that brings you metadata, deck list, or strategy guide every single week proactively for Midweek Magic, meaning we drop the content before the event even starts, not halfway through it like some of the other guys. So if you are already a member of the community, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a thing, much less midweek magic. The entire concept of jumping is to take all the difficulty out of deck building. And really it couldn't be much simpler because you're just making two choices. Your first choice, you're gonna be shown three uh, packs or mini decks and uh, with that you're going to be uh, given an image that is a little bit of a clue uh, a name which is generally your biggest clue as to what the theme of the deck is and of course there's always an indication of the color associated with that pack uh, and all you do if you uh, scroll over each of the decks it will also show you a key card to show you a little bit more mechanically what is going on thematically with that deck. And all you do is uh, click on the one that you want and then down in the bottom right hand corner you hit confirm pack to lock in that first choice. At that point the screen updates and it shows you whatever your first choice was on the very far left hand side of the screen and then it's going to present to you three additional choices, the idea here being just the same. Uh, you get the same context clues and you click on and confirm pick for your second choice. At that point, the decks are going to shuffle together. Some uh, fairly appropriate land is going to be added. Although honestly, the, the land algorithm that they use is not always awesome. Uh, and at that point, you have a playable deck for the event. Now, the first thing we need to talk about for this week is that, well, Midweek Magic isn't always great about communicating exactly what's going on. Like for this event, they didn't specifically say that it's Phantom, but it probably is. And that means you don't get to keep the cards when it's over. They did specifically call out the fact that this is an alchemy inspired event, even though alchemy is only about 12.5% of the existing pack pool. And uh, my guess is you're really not going to see a whole lot of alchemy content. All right, so now let's get into talking about the specifics of the March of the Machines jump in packs. Uh, of course, March of the Machines is the final standard legal set for the 2023 year. Uh, starting in the fall, we will then be working on the 2024 standard legal year. Uh, this being the last set means it probably statistically has the least amount of impact. Uh, we know everything that's going in standard between now and the end of rotation. We know about 80% of what standard is going to look like post rotation. So we can do a pretty good job of knowing how this set is going to impact standard. Although you can never be perfect. Uh, with regards to jump in, this set of course brings 10 new packs. And because we have such a state of nearly perfect information, you can afford to be very, very stringent in your evaluations. Only three of those 10 packs got a good grade and only one of them got an ugly grade. And just in case you're not familiar with our patent pending Eastwood evaluation system, 
we basically have three tiers. The good, these are going to be your daily grinder decks and on, are focused on giving you the best results for your effort. Uh, tier two, we lovingly call the bad, uh, but still possibly worth uh, a little bit of observation. Uh, we're keeping those on the radar in case anything changes. Uh, regarding its place within the conversation of the meta. And of course, tier three are the ugly decks that are just not worth our time, energy, or resources. When it comes to the new March of the Machine pack options, the absolute cream of the crop, top of the hill, is uh, the convertible deck. And not because I think this is really going to spawn a new deck of its own, but uh, because the, uh, the Chrome Sea Shark, uh, the whatever we're calling it, uh, this card it looks to be a perfect fit for the existing and very budget-friendly mono blue control deck, particularly for those of you that are maybe running uh, Delver or Ledger Shredder as your third creature, this is a much better option and you want to get these rares as cheap as you can and as quick as you can, and this is a prime choice. Uh, there may very well be some other cards here that fit into that deck, but honestly, at this point, it's a little hard to tell. Uh, although we have nearly perfect information, uh, that new set in the fall, of course, is going to change that build significantly. I'd say the deck is probably already 50-60% built, uh, but of course the other half remains to be seen. Now to just very quickly fill out the rest of the spectrum here, the other two good decks are uh, boosted because of the plus one plus one counter synergies and uh, knights just because of that tribal synergy that I think is going to be so important next year. Uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the one ugly deck out of this new group is Invaders. Uh, it looks to be very much on that uh, Phyrexian tribal aspect, which I'm just not sure is going to be real. Uh, of course, that could very well change if that ends up being, for instance, the red-white new player experience deck for 2024. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see how that pans out, but for right now, that is the one pack I would strongly recommend avoiding. And now let's talk about the jump in pool at large beyond the introduction of this set. And really, in a word, it's huge. Uh, the pool right now is 80 individual packs. And because we have such relatively perfect information, uh, a full 60% of those available packs have found their way into the ugly category. Uh, for reasons that the rare uh, just has not proven itself. Uh, you already have the commons and uncommons for most of those. And uh, in large part because they're getting ready to rotate. Uh, the majority of the rotating packs uh, have found their way down here. The net result here is I encourage you to be very conservative with jump in and by extension draft as well this season. Uh, we do have a uh, March of the Machines only constructed midweek magic coming up uh, May 2nd. That's going to run through the 4th. So I suggest you, you do just enough limited to get a viable deck for that event and then maybe consider not doing a whole lot more of this for the time being until we see what is going to be going on with the starter decks for 2024. And that means for those of you who aren't seeing this video when it was immediate released, and maybe you're catching it between the dates of May 5th and June 20th, my best advice is to hold off on doing any jump in, hold your gold, hold your tokens, until the alchemy reset of the jump in packs comes around with the release of Lord of the Rings. Now, not to worry, we're not going to see a full changeover to alchemy, at least we don't expect to, uh, but that pool is going to get a whole lot smaller, and we expect that the number of packs that are going to be in that uh, bad, ugly category is going to go way, way down. In other words, your gold, your tokens, and your effort is going to be way more valuable after June 20th. 
And hey, don't worry, if you are brand new and looking to grow your collection or you're just itching to build a new deck, check out my best of budget builds playlist for a ton of different ways to grow your collection without burning through your wild cards in ways that you're going to ultimately regret. But there are still plenty of reasons to be interested in some of those packs that are getting ready to rotate. Uh, for instance, in the Tier 1 good decks, you've got the Werewolves and Wolf Pack deck that could still make a significant addition to your collection. The Enchanting Mechs and Counters decks are all good choices in the bad category. And even some of the ugly decks are pretty good. If you're interested in alchemy, you have an interest in a particular tribal theme, or you just like playing jank. And hey, if you didn't catch all that, Matt wouldn't want you to worry because there's a link down in the doobly-doo that will take you to the Excel spreadsheet where I make all of my notations and continue to update that spreadsheet throughout the season and the year at large. Uh, all you need to access that is a Google account, which of course is absolutely free because that's how we do things around here. Just make sure you save a copy of that. That way you can update it with your own notes about where you think I'm wrong or change color spectrums or whatever it else it is you do. And one last thing, I will be playing this event over on Twitch on the 19th of April at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I'm going to play that through on all three of my free-to-play accounts, a time allowing. So be sure to check that out. And hey, subscribe to the Twitch channel while you're there. And folks, before you go, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on a thing. Because I know I can't change the magic economy all by myself, but I think we can.